Hi guys, welcome back to my Steps to Sobriety, my show on YouTube and on podcast with me, your host, Stefan Neff. I've got Ilanif ben Benjamin with me. Ilanif is uh, a warrior, a crusader who helps other women to deal with teenage daughters and is working hard to teach us how to understand these often emotional messes that go uh, so so sometimes against the grain sometimes you want to cuddle them some sometimes you want to strangle them and <laughs> that is that is just the girls and and I've got two boys and it's exactly the same my way around so I don't have that help but at least you're there for the women so Ilanif I'm so so pleased to have you on my show because we need to look after our youngsters and I so want to learn from you what has worked in your experience and what you are teaching those women out there Welcome to my wonderful. show. Thank you, Stefan. Thank you for having me and giving me this wonderful opportunity to add value to parents' lives and our teenagers' lives. I really appreciate the space. Mm. Um, you're right. I work with mothers. I work with mothers of teenage daughters. And um, for me, I, I mean, I want to make it clear that there's many ways of getting this parenting thing right. And what I do is I offer uh, a different way. Um, a way that has worked for me, for the people that I coach as well. And so I feel that it's important to share this beautiful gift and this way of raising our daughters. Um, I use techniques from meditation, yoga, conscious parenting, stress-based resiliency. Uh, we do sometimes shadow work and energetic work with mothers to really help them dive deep into their own stories um, in order to show up in the world as the strong wisdom, like wise women that they are. Um, and to embody that, once you embody that, it's really beautiful because it reflects on our children, on our sons in your case, and my daughters and the teenage daughters of this world. And in the end, what we have is a, a generation that is, what we're doing is we're healing not only generations past, but we're healing ourselves and many generations to come. So the work is not easy. Um, the work, um, I feel is not for everybody. Sometimes there's a state of readiness for it, <laughs> but when you are and you're ready to dive deep, the results are just beautiful. So that's why I do what I do. It's in line with a lot of my experience as a um, as a, a teacher and a guidance counselor in my past life <laughs> in Toronto. And I noticed that, you know, our girls in particular are choosing unhealthy ways to deal with their stress, um, abuse of social media, risky self sexual behavior, alcohol, drugs, abuse of prescription drugs, um, you know, and, and these things to deal with those daily hardships. And I feel that as human beings, we have a choice. If you want to go down that realm and if you want to choose those tools as solutions to your stress, you can do that. Hey, mm. <laughs> it's there. Mm. Yet there are other choices as well that you can make that are healthy. And so what I do is I encourage the teenage girls, I encourage the mothers to embody healthy ways of dealing with stress and anxiety so that that can be the tools that they draw on to deal with the hardship of this world. So that's what I do, Stefan. Mm. Yeah. What a beautiful, beautiful summary and what a beautiful mission. Because mm -hmm. ultimately, uh, the, the figures speak for themselves. I mean, the, the most recent ones I read was that about 20%, so one in five of teenagers, female teenagers, do suffer officially from anxiety disorder. And right. the, the levels of anxiety in our society seems to have gone up compared with, with just one generation back, two generations back. Oh, yeah. Within well, the past five years, I'd say, I've seen this spike in, in the anxiety and the depression that our teenagers are going through. And why? It's, it's devastating. It's I, devastating. And I, I yeah, see that. Ahead. But why? Why? Have you have yeah, you got I mean, any any idea any inkling what has changed? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think besides the societal choices that we're making, a rise in single parent families, um, 
you know, the, the rise of technology and social media as an influence in our lives, I think we're also not doing our work. We're not sitting in silence like we used to. Mm. And I think that the silence is an important piece. And I'm not talking about mothers sitting with their hands in Shin Mudra and meditation because we can't do that. It's, it's a hard space to be. But giving yourself that space of walking in nature or waking up half an hour earlier before you start your day or, you know, taking a longer shower or finally sitting down and drinking a warm cup of coffee. Like <laughs> those kinds of moments are really, are really precious and they allow us to face those parts of ourselves that we're kind of afraid to face, but that need a lot of untangling and need a lot of, of nurturing and care and a big hug, like our inner child. Or I, I, you know, heal the inner teenager of a lot of these mothers. And that sometimes is the only solution to healing our daughters and healing the hardships that they're going through. And we think by, you know, I mean, the system is one thing and, I bet I also feel like the system is exhausted, our education system, our social workers, our psychologists, um, our medical systems are exhausted. And we tend to look outward, outward, out, outward. But the solution is really inward. And when we give ourselves that opportunity to look inward, beautiful things happen. And it's hard work, like I said, but at the same time, it's necessary work um, to, to face those I'm, you know, to face those shadows, but not necessarily face them, but walk beside those shadows and to be okay with them and, and to show your vulnerabilities as a mother and say, you know what, this is my story. This is where I've been. And your kids want to hear that because they're listening. They're really listening to those stories. So I think that's, but, that's my answer anyways. And you're yeah. so right. You're so right. Here we try to be the best parents, the best mums, the best dads, yet it is actually an incredibly busy time. So if you imagine as a woman, you have tried to build up your own life, you have tried to go out there, you found Mr. Right, now the first baby comes along. Right. Most women don't even know much about the postnatal depletion. Just the sheer oh, fact yeah. that their body is is drained from from uh, energy and from from all the good stuff by growing this other being, and then you go into this kind of two three years of no sleep, and oh, then, yeah. <laughs> then you just keep going, and it basically right. changes your own life gets put on hold. You're only mummy, mummy, mummy. And yeah. it is a pitfall that then women just keep going in this busy, busy, busy mode and never regain their balance, never regain their, their, their self-love, their focus on themselves. They do yes. not sharpen the saw. And suddenly mm. they've got teenagers. 10 years have gone by, 12 years have gone by. And you blink and you think, oh, yesterday I was still 21. What happened That's now? Right. Exactly. That's Who right. am I? Where am I? And mm -hmm. it is weird. And now suddenly you're supposed to intelligently, with an emotional intelligence, look after these complex young beings that develop right. their own emotional problems. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. What a beautiful way of stating it. Yeah. Um, because my work with teenagers, a lot of it is untangling. I mean, as children, when we're faced with injustice or when we're faced with hardship, what do we do? We don't have the voice. We don't have the emotional vocabulary to be able to express how we're feeling and discuss and process those feelings. Kids hide in their room, hide under the tables. And then once, you know, they hit their teenage age, the teenage years, that's when it all starts coming out. <laughs> that's when it all starts coming out. And that's, I think, when parents start to realize the impact that they had when their children were younger. And you know that this was, <laughs> so that's oh, why please. I do what I do, Stefan. I, oh, I, I'm an untangler. <laughs> but um, it's interesting that you said that because we do, we do lose ourselves in parenthood and in motherhood. And um, one of the things that I feel is so important, I recently wrote an article that I shared about um, when we're on this journey of parenthood to have this image of a three-way highway. And the three-way highway is going one way. And on one lane is you, your dreams, your values, your past, your experience, your future. And on the other one is your child, future, dreams, values, etc. And in the middle 
we sometimes come sometimes in the middle and we collaborate, <laughs> right? And we talk and we process things and we share our experiences. But it's important to, to be on your own path, right? Mm -hmm. And to come to the middle often. Um, some people think that once my child becomes a teenager, that their friends become their primary socializing agent and, you know, hands off, I've got nothing to do with them anymore. It's not right. It's not true. It's a half truth. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I find that the kids that I work with often they're, they're longing for that relationship with their parents. They're longing for forgiveness from their parents. They're, they're, they're living in fear and they're terrified and they don't know how to have those important conversations with their parents about experiences that they're having outside of the home. And that middle middle road is really important where you share your values, share your experiences and share your vulnerabilities so that they can learn from it as well. But then they also have to learn from their own is, is important too. So <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I'm laughing here because obviously every single word you're saying rings a bell with me. And, and uh, it's, it's well, you've the, got a dad of teenagers, of uh, course. <laughs> absolutely. And it is just one of these things. And it's an amazing how you just said it with the fear uh, and the longing. There is no doubt I had, I had with my youngest, I had the most beautiful relationship and lots of cuddles, etc. And then he changed. I changed, he started mm. become a young man, and there was this moving away from me, yet at the same token, as you describe it, the weaving yes. in the lanes of the motorway. Oh, yeah. And it is, yet we are both missing each other, but we both yeah. don't really know how to be together because he wants to grow, he wants to be his own man. Mm. And he does so not want to be taught by me or it is, whatever I say is wrong <laughs> anyhow. Right, um, right. And it is, and it is that kind of thing. But he is, is yearning to be together, but treated as an equal. So it is that's oh, that yeah. kind of that kind of. But it's, I'm grown up. <laughs> that kind of thing. And, it's it's a dance. It's a it's a really tough dance to play as a parent, right? Because in one breath they're snuggling up on the couch with you and asking you your stories. And then in the next breath, you know, I hate my life and I want to leave this house and <laughs> get yep. me out of here. But that's what they're doing is they're, they're pulling away. That's their dance. And it's completely natural. It's how they do it. It's how we did it. Um, that's right. But yeah, there's, you know, I mean, be, despite all of the, the differences that our teenagers have and that they're living through these, this day and age, there are also so many similarities between us as grown-ups, as parents and as children. And, you know, they're, they're as brilliant as ever. They're as brilliant as ever. And I think that, you know, parents often don't see that, often don't see that. So, you know, that's one thing that the blessing that I've had working with teenagers and working with mothers is that I see it every day. Mm. They're amazing, amazing creatures, have access to so much information. Mm. They live in a completely different world. They have so much to teach us. Mm. So much to teach us, not just us, you know, putting our values and our experiences and lessons on them, but really opening our ears and, and opening our hearts. And that's a part of the growth. That's a part of the organic, holistic growth that happens when we really connect with our, our kids on that level. And it should be a symbiosis. It should be both, yeah. both, both beings gain value and gain energy from each other. Sometimes mm -hmm. it, it is, however, more the third world war that one appears to see. And certainly um, there are, when I look at my best friend, his children, there were some doozies of fights there. And mm. and it is, it's hard to find that middle ground that uh, wanting to be the best friend as a, as a parent and yeah. therefore laying no boundaries to being absolutely strict with the boundaries and therefore yeah. driving the kids away. Damn, right. damn, it is to find it's, that middle ground. <laughs> it is, it's, yeah, it's just that's chuckling with chainsaws. That I do with, yeah. That's the whole yeah. two lessons that I do with the mothers on emotional boundaries. Mm. And, you know, sometimes we let things trigger us as parents and it's not because of the fact that our kids are triggering us with what they're triggering us in the moment, but it's stuff that's happened in our past. You know, why do we respond the way that we do? Exactly. What is it that's, yeah, what is it that's causing that response? Why is something so small and insignificant to somebody else so big and, you know, so <laughs> humongous true. to me? Well, that's your work. That's mm. your work. Let's, let's dig, 
a little bit deeper on that one. Let's dive deeper on that. And, you know, once you figure out those triggers and how you move and how you respond in a relationship with your children, with yourself, mm. that's where the, ch- the, the change happens, Stefan. Mm. That's where it happens. Absolutely. And it's the yeah. same, the parallel there is indeed the, the recovery process after an addiction, mm. after alcohol, because it's exactly the same thing. There are certain right. things that trigger you with regards to using, with regards to uh, drinking, etc. So you need to figure out why do you suddenly want to have a drink? What has yeah. just triggered you? What has pushed yes. your buttons? And it's amazing, the same parallel now going back to the to the teenagers. It is True. I, I found myself recently a number of times when I wanted to become angry at mm-hmm. my sons, when suddenly I had flashbacks of exactly me being in their situation, acting exactly the same as they did. <laughs> not not washing up, not hoovering, doing doing exactly the same that oh, drives yeah. me nuts now. <laughs> so <laughs> it's unfair. It's unfair. I can't even be angry with them. <laughs> well, we do karmic work too. So <laughs> there you go. So no, so true, so true. And I yeah. think that's the skill for us as parents that we sometimes need to shut up and listen. Yeah. What are they saying? And also listen to our own heart. Why are you feeling the way you're feeling? I guess that's where yeah. the mindfulness comes in. Does yeah. the moment you you push the stop button, you don't want to get into this fight, whatever he or she said. You right. just want to step out and actually say, what's going on here? Um, could it have to do not with what you're just hearing, but actually what you heard maybe 30 years ago? Yeah, um, absolutely. And and addressing that stuff yeah. from a space of, of not being resistant to it, being curious about it, mm. um, being self-compassionate towards it, um, being self-forgiving is important too. Um, those are the ways that we move forward in a healthy mm. way and not by resisting it, but, mm. and not diving into it right away, but really just staying curious about where those triggers come from. Mm. Right. Mm. So, yeah. That's beautiful. I mean, when did you develop these insights? <clears throat> when did you start turning around from a school guidance counselor who probably has yeah. got a list of, okay, you're doing that, then you fit that to mm-hmm. actually let's look at the whole thing more holistically. Right. I mean, I think it's all the dots and experiences and choices of our life that bring us to where we are. Mm. Um, my Both of my parents are Indian, so I grew up with those kinds of holistic ways in our household mm. and was always curious about it. Um, I traveled the world, so my insight about teenagers is not just from a Canadian or South American perspective, it's actually from a worldwide perspective. I recognize that there were similarities in, in terms of the lives that our, our girls, our teenage girls and our, and our boys are living. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> I did, uh, <clears throat> through my own interests and through my own, um, through my own choices um, and curiosity, I went to India I studied yoga there for five months. I did uh, mindfulness in Thailand, and um, you know my my light my my journey took me to a lot of those spaces in Asia. Mm. And when I but I would always come back to Toronto. Toronto was my home base. I worked as a teacher for sixteen years, and um, you know when I became a guidance counselor, I just it started to become more real to me how exhausted everybody is. Mm. And so I used to share from my heart what worked for me on my journey through my experiences, through my difficulties, and the girls were attracted to it. They wanted to know more about it. Hey, miss, like, tell me, yeah, tell me more about that. Like, you seem like you really got it together. Like, how are you doing this? How did you overcome this? Hmm. And again, sharing those, those vulnerabilities. And then they wanted to try it because I was, I was embodying it. But it's one thing is that, you know, you teach them all this wonderful stuff and then they take it home and then their parents are reflecting something else. And it Mm -hmm. feels like, Mm -hmm. you know, it's, so it's a collaboration. It takes a a village for sure. It's why I work with the mothers. Mm -hmm. Um, because they need to to do their work as well. And so I think, I mean, to answer your question, I think that's, I don't, there's no one straight answer. Um, I've always been attracted to that kind of work and always engaged in it on some level. And uh, I brought it into uh, the Canadian system along with other really amazing allies 
who walked the path with me. And it wasn't only the girls who were attracted to it. It was, it was the parents who were looking for another solution um, because what everything that they had tried wasn't working anymore. And so for me, it was like an aha moment. But when we work within the structures of an education system or any system, sometimes there's limitations in terms of how people uh, receive, you know, those practices as beautiful as they are. Um, so I had to take it to another level and, and bring that wisdom to the world because I had to, I had to honor who I was. I had to be obedient to that um, side of me. And I'm really glad that I did because this is my, my life's work. So I do it from my heart. It's, I, I can talk to you for three hours about this stuff. <laughs> it's just, you know, when you can do that, you know, you're meant, it's, you're meant to be doing it. So. <laughs> Which is exactly, exactly. I had that sensation when I first came across you and I thought, no, I need to get you on my show. We need to talk. That's, yeah. that's exactly what we are missing out there. That kind of insight into our own psyche and our own needs and desires and wishes and dreams and how they then reflect on our actions and how then our actions reflect on our children, which are basically yeah. like, like big, big uh, sponges. They just soak, oh, yeah. soak everything up and we just don't realize it. And so, from such a young age, too, indeed. like it's 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 startling to me. I have a five year old, a five year old and a seven month old. I have a lot of respect to all the parents who have made it out of this stage because my job is a teenager. <laughs> oh, it's hard. But, um, you know, I tell the story of my of the way that me and my husband used to deal with with, um, um, you know, challenges in our relationship. And I'm the type of person who will, okay, let me think about it. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. I won't necessarily engage in confrontation right there and there. I'll almost go silent and I retreat into myself. And um, then I'll come back the next day and I'll, and I'll talk about what the issue was. That's kind of how I used to work. And one of the things that the teachers of my five-year-old was saying was that, you know, Siona has this way of dealing with problems. She doesn't you know, people will, will bully her or people will, um, you know, hold her hand in a way and pull her in a direction and she doesn't want to go, but she just retreats. She doesn't say anything. <laughs> and, you know, we really want to give her a voice. We want to tell her yeah. to defend herself, that it's okay, that if she, if she feels uncomfortable in a situation, mm -hmm. she, she should be able to, to, to show up and to speak her, her yeah. truth. And, you know, a big question was asked to me, Ilaneth, how are you showing up in your relationship in your household with your husband? And I had to do the work on that one. I thought, oh my gosh, this kid seeing me, you know, whenever we have those, those ins, those tet -tet -tet, all she's seeing is me retreating, but she's not really seeing the piece where I'm problem solving and discussing and coming back to the issue. Uh -huh. So instead of, and we had spoken to Siona several times, you know, you have to defend yourself. Why are you doing this? Blah, blah, blah. A direct um, the direct lesson she never took to it. I swear, Stephen, in about a month or so, when I changed my behavior, because we said, okay, we've got to show up in a different way. It was like day and night. <laughs> it was like day and night. This girl, she knew how to do it. She got the emotional literacy to do it. And uh, it was, it was beautiful. And, and that was, she was three and a half, four at that time. So, you know, just to reflect back your comment about being sponges, that's as early as it happens. It's incredible. How beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> and that's and that's so important, isn't it? I mean, it's it's lovely that the school, that the teachers knew that and were asking yeah. you that question. Now that's an insight. <laughs> oh no, they didn't ask me. I asked myself. <laughs> oh, I see. I see. Because I, yeah. Yeah, I, I had thought to ask that myself was... that question. It was, yeah, ah. I had to ask myself that, that big question. Mm. Um, from, but from... it is a question that's important, I think, that teachers should ask. Shit, yeah. Parents, uh, yeah. And, and that's what I'm saying. I think that <laughs> absolutely every, every teenager should have mandatory rehab. They should go oh, for yeah. four weeks into a rehab. And in a rehab yes. where I was, where I learned about emotions where I learned to talk about emotions, where mm. I had talks with psychologists, psychiatrists, where I had yeah. people who were modeling behaviors different than the one that I knew. And right. I learned so much from these four weeks. 
if something like that was mandatory summer camp or something like that. God. Oh, beautiful. It would be exactly. so nice. It would Wouldn't be so it? nice. This is, yeah, this, mm. unfortunately we learn it all the hard way. Right. Mm. And it's, it's really sad. The, the traumas and hardship that we have to go through before we can kind of uncover those. I mean, it's a beautiful process. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, there are so many easier ways. And mm. if it was, if it was mandatory, be mm. something. Yeah. I think that the, what worries me or what, what frustrates me is that you might be more inclined to find the help from a from a health coach or from uh, from a other professional um, if you are uh, a little bit of a better social strata if you're if you're a bit more educated yeah. yourself yet it is and whilst whilst we all need help it is probably those people who have been brought up in families where there's a lot of violence where there's a lot of frustration anger and where there's a lack of emotional maturity that then right. gets handed on and handed on and handed on and, and, yeah. and it's it's basically those those children that so need to help and those parents that need the help so it would be so nice to see more focus on that not yeah, just absolutely. them in the in the prison system or in when basically the ambulance at the bottom of the cliff yeah absolutely and unfortunately within our systems it's the privileged few who get the access to this kind of information hmm. and you know it's it's unfair and it's the squeaky wheels it's those parents who have the money the resources the experience hmm. um you know, God bless them. I think it's wonderful that they can give their children the opportunity. Yet there's this other population mm. that is really suffering and has learned to just kind of, you know, survive, survive, mm. survive in their days and live these unconscious lives. Mm. And those are the ones that also need to be treated because there's there's so much talent within humanity. And, you know, I Absolutely. see those kids that get um, push to the to the side because their parents didn't have the voice or the resources to ask for help or to reach out for help. Mm. And these kids, this talent doesn't ever get seen in this world. And it's mm. and it's really sad. To me, it's mm. really sad. It angers me. So yeah. true. So true. And because yeah. that's that's the passion that we both share where you see that that so much could be done. But yeah. it is the focus is on on other things within the schooling system or within mm -hmm. society, where just yeah. you just wander and and shake your head. But I think that it's is, the lingo, right? It's like some of these parents know the lingo of of wellness and mm -hmm. healthcare, and mm -hmm. they really know how to use the system to their advantage. Mm -hmm. That's that's what I find is is unfortunately happening, and mm -hmm. there's a whole other population that doesn't get served. Mm, so true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I mean, there will be there will be a lot of mums and dads out there who are listening now to our interview mm. and say, "Ooh, ooh, ooh, that sounds actually yes." You know, it rings a bell like like with me. Yeah. It. Um, yeah. What would you tell those parents? What when they mm -hmm. are sort of ble bleary eyed, uh, <laughs> trying trying to listen to this podcast and think, hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Where to start? <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I mentioned earlier, there's no one way, one right way of getting it right. If this kind of work, you know, if you feel an urge or a calling, then listen to that because I would encourage you to explore that a little bit more. If you mm. feel like there's there's some there's something that needs to be treated within you or held within you to follow that urge. Sometimes we feel like we're in a really dark space and that there's no outs or we feel exhausted as parents of teenagers, um, you know, to hang on to that one thing that you're really drawn to. So if this conversation is something that, you know, lights you up or you're curious about mindfulness or you're curious about this as a strategy, then to really dive into it and to explore it, it's waiting for you. It's waiting for you to, to just, to it's waiting for you. Hmm. So true. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if and they... it's free. <laughs> Most <laughs> yeah. of the time it's free. <laughs> yeah. Indeed. Right. That's... Once you learn. The... <laughs> Indeed. And it is, you might start, um, even if, if, the, if, if money is tight, let's say COVID-19 has done a number on your yeah. job and, but you're still struggling and struggling even more now with your teenager, <sighs> then 
go back to those sources that are for free. That is your schooling yeah. and the, the school counselors, the, the school nurses. There might be social yeah. workers in the school. Go that back can to be your assistance. breath, right? Like just sit in silence. Go back to your breath. Oh, start with that. That's <laughs> very true. Start That's very that. true. Right. But, That's there. There are a lot of there are a lot of things that you can reach out to. It's um, yeah. it's your willingness. It's the willingness to do that. Indeed. So, and maybe yeah. be open, be open with your teenager, yeah. be open and show that you're interested, show that you love them. And yes, you might yeah. just have a doozy of a fight, but at the same token, I, just, I, had, I had recently an interesting discussion two nights ago. And when my son sort of told me about that, he is, that he doesn't enjoy working with me because he feels mm. that I treat him as a son that, and he wants okay. to be treated as an equal. And right. I, uh, it was really hard for me to hear that, but I guess it is the logical thing. But I, I try to make sure that I'm not responding somehow in a, in a funny odd way, but that yeah. I actually respond to what he's saying, that I acknowledge it, that, I underst- that he knows I understood it. And that yes. I said, look, I don't really know what to do about it. I, yes. I, I need to, I guess, think about it myself. I certainly right. don't want to treat you in any way that makes you feel uncomfortable. And I love you to bits. And I'm trying mm-hmm. to, to change my ways, but there's just no way that I can somehow get rid of 54 years of experience <laughs> and, and things and all the, yeah. the hard lessons that I learned. And no doubt I want to give them to you. But I know. It, yeah. it is bad. <laughs> But I it's try to, and, yeah. Go I try, ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, I try to make sure that he understands that. And sometimes we need to talk about our emotions. Not sometimes. We need to talk so much more about our emotions openly, so that it becomes transparent and it becomes yeah. it, that they understand why we respond the way we respond as parents. Absolutely, and I think also, Stefan, in that same light. Um, part of the work that I do as well is, is helping mothers to parent their children in different ways. The way that we parent our children is very different from the way that we parent our teenagers. They still need you just as much. They're not having the tantrums that a two-year-old had. (laughs) So learning how to recognize those calls for help when they happen. Um, I often use the analogy of a pothole. If I'm walking down the street and there's a pothole in the middle of the street and I'm with my five-year-old, I can teach her as much as I can. I can say, you know, Siona, there's a pothole that's coming up. Make sure that you walk around it. If you fall inside, you're really going to hurt yourself. And maybe she'll listen. Maybe she won't. And if she doesn't, I can go as far as lifting her up so that she doesn't get hurt. And Estefan with your teenagers is different. (laughs) We've got to parent them very differently. So how do we do that? We, it's really hard to sometimes watch them get hit by a bus or in this case, fall into the, the pothole. But it's a necessary step because they learn from their experiences. Mm. How do we parent in a situation like that? Mm. Well, we ask the right questions. Mm. What is the right question? The right question is, how did it feel to fall in that hole? What did it Mm. feel like? And that's how you parent a teen. When a teen is able to kind of come to their own and Mm. think for themselves, that's when the lesson happens. Mm. You know, like that's, that's how they learn too. They're risk takers. They want to learn from their own experiences. They think they're adults, but they're not. And, you know, so the only way is for them to really fall in that hole Mm. as much as you can try and offer your advice and to, you know, hold yourself, hold your words back, hold yourself back, maybe, you know, give the suggestion. But at the end of the day, your kid, your teenager is going to do what they want to do. I, you know, a lot of my parents don't like to hear that one, (laughs) but (laughs) It's important to ask the right questions afterwards, to ask those reflection questions so that they can really um, understand their own experiences and and learn from those experiences. So true. So true. Yeah. Ilan, if, if people want to learn more about you, where can they go if they want to make contact with you and maybe maybe say, hey, can we, can we have a bit of more of a working relationship? How do they yeah. go about that? Well, I've got my website, motheringmindfuldaughters.com. I'm also on Instagram, and I have a free global Facebook group for mothers. Um, 
I find that mothers tend to collaborate a lot when their kids are younger, when they talk about sleeping habits and dirty diapers. <laughs> but there's that isolation piece that happens when their kids are teenagers. Yeah. So it's really important um, to have a community. And I have that community through my free Facebook group. So that would be a beautiful start. Um, and I also offer, of course, one-on-one -on -one coaching. Later in the year, we'll have um, some online group coaching. Um, but every coaching series looks different because we bring to the table different experiences and traumas and we are attracted to different ways of healing. So I work, it's, that's the best way to work. Yeah. And it's beautiful because with your background, you have been literally around the world a few times. Yeah. Uh, so you yeah. have seen different ways that work and can bring different solutions to the table that maybe other health coaches might not necessarily be able yeah. to just because of your own experiences, which is great. Sure. Uh, that's perfect. Yeah. Oh, Ilanif, it was oh. such a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful <laughs> interview. I'm so grateful that you could share some of your passion and some of your insights in this quite emotional topic, because we yeah. all love these, these beautiful beings there. And sometimes there's just, you're on loggerheads and you go, <laughs> and <laughs> like it or lump it, it will happen. But yes. it's how you deal with it and how, Absolutely. what you can learn from it and, and, importantly how you put your differences aside and still That's say right. i love you you really yes. pressed my buttons but i love mm. you and let's beautiful. work it out exactly that's right beautiful <laughs> thank you Stephen, for creating this bit stefan for creating this space i really appreciate Absolutely. it and right. i hope you know our messages resonated with the hearts of parents Absolutely, guys. Yeah. Guys out there, don't if you if you feel that you need help and if you if you feel mm. frustrated, you could do far far worse than get in touch with Ilanif. Please <laughs> seek help, <laughs> seek help, and 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 you are not yeah. alone out there. Okay, guys. <laughs> yeah, so exactly. everyone out there, look after yourself. Bye. Wonderful. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>